National Five Biology, Life on Earth, video number three, photosynthesis and energy in ecosystems. Photosynthesis consists of a series of enzyme control reactions that allow green plants to make their own food. This involves the capture of light energy from the sun. Light energy is trapped in the green pigment, pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is found in viscous shaped structures called chloroplasts. The basic equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide from the air plus water from the soil in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll makes glucose and oxygen gas. If we look at the biochemistry of photosynthesis, it can be divided into two stages. The first stage being the light reactions and the second stage is called carbon fixation. In the light reactions, during this a series of reactions, light energy is converted to chemical energy and this is used to convert ADP plus inorganic phosphate into ATP. The ATP contains a lot of chemical energy. Some light energy is also used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is released as a byproduct and the hydrogen is used during the carbon fixation stage. In this carbon fixation stage, the hydrogen and the ATP produced during the light reactions are used with carbon dioxide to produce sugar or glucose. This energy comes from ATP. The hydrogen and carbon dioxide are bound together to create sugar using the energy from ATP. Glucose from photosynthesis can be used in respiration to provide energy for the cell. It can be stored as starch, a complex carbohydrate, as an energy store for use in the future or can be used to manufacture structural cellulose. If we now look at the limiting factors of photosynthesis, a limiting factor is something that will, if in short supply, limit the rate of a reaction. For photosynthesis, these include temperature, light intensity, and carbon dioxide concentration. In this limiting factor graph, we have the rate of photosynthesis with increasing light intensity. This line represents that trend at 10 degrees C. This other line represents that trend at a higher temperature of 15 degrees C. We can divide that graph into three stages. In the first stage, light is the limiting factor controlling the rate of photosynthesis. In the second stage, temperature is the limiting factor because that determines the split between the two lines. In the third stage, something else will be the limiting factor. We do not have the information in the graph at that point to say exactly what it is, but it is probably, in this case, carbon dioxide concentration. Moving on to look at energy in ecosystems, a food chain shows the linear transfer of energy between organisms in an ecosystem. In this case, the oak leaf would be the producer, the wood mouse the primary consumer that eats the oak leaf, the weasel the secondary consumer, which is the wood mouse, and the owl, the tertiary consumer, which would eat the weasel. The wood mouse is a herbivore, the weasel and the owl are both carnivores. However, any organisms that would eat all of those other organisms in the food chain would be omnivores. Within any food chain, there are energy losses between the different trophic levels. The width of this arrow represents energy, and the arrow on the left-hand side indicates the total energy available for the next trophic level in the food chain. Then energy losses would include uh, food not eaten, for example, fur, bones, etc. Food not digested and passed out as feces. Energy used for movement. Energy used to generate body heat. And only that much energy would be available for the next consumer in the food chain. Overall, about 90% of the energy is lost in a transfer of energy between trophic levels in a food chain. Food chains can be represented with pyramids of number and energy. The pyramid of numbers can be drawn like this, with the length of each bar representing the numbers of each organism in the food chain. We can, however, get irregular pyramids of number. Some pyramids of numbers may look odd due to the different numbers of organisms at each trophic level in the food chain. For example, in this picture on the left, there's only one single oak tree. However, in the picture on the right, there will be many trees 
flipping on a single rabbit. Sometimes a pyramid of numbers is not the best way to present this kind of information. For example, for this food chain, a pyramid of numbers would look like this. Since there's only one oak tree, a pyramid would have a very small base. If, however, we were to find the total energy of organisms at each level in the food chain, we'll always get a pyramid shape. So that would be the pyramid of numbers for that food chain. However, this would be the pyramid of energy.